Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the new subsurface scattering shader for iClone 7.8. So subsurface scattering, or SSS if you're not familiar, is a simulation of an effect when light penetrates a translucent surface and light scattered in different directions. Uh, you'll see this in sort of uh, in objects in the real world like skin or leaves or wax. So if you look at a leaf and the, and the sun's in the background, the sun kind of shines basically through the leaf and it scatters and almost makes the leaf glow. Or uh, if you're looking at a person's like uh, earlobe, uh, for example, or ear from the uh, from the behind, and the, li the lighting is from behind, it'll kind of almost look like it's glowing. And we'll talk more about that. You'll see that effect as we move on uh, through this tutorial here. Okay, so on the screen we have uh, three cute little gummy bears here. Um, and if you want to find this project, you can go to your content manager under projects, and under the SSS folder you'll find the SSS demo. You can mess around with that on your own time. The SSS uh, shader templates are also found in the media tab over here under material and under SSS. You'll find a whole bunch of templates here. And to apply those to your character, all you got to do is uh, object, I guess, in this case. All you have to do is uh, click and drag it and just apply it to your character. You can see the amethyst one. We have things like uh, the amphibian we can apply. Uh, we're going to talk about those settings a little bit later on. You can see the lighting changes slightly um, due to the uh, global illumination effect. Uh, we can talk more about that later as well, but uh, some really cool looking uh, blue crystal and black marble effects uh, that uh, really demonstrate the, uh, you can see the subsurface scattering here on the uh, left side or the bear's right side here. Uh, we'll demonstrate that a little bit more uh, in the future here in the, as this tutorial goes on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply this emerald one. We're going to use this template to kind of uh, demonstrate uh, most of what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. And we'll get rid of uh, bear one and bear two. Right, this time it's Bear 3's uh, time to shine, so we'll go ahead and focus on him. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind that's very important is um, the lighting and shadows really affect the way that your subsurface scattering uh, shows up on your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and twirl down uh, Bear 3. You can see we have three separate lights trained on this bear. We have a right rim light and a right key light. If we zoom out a little bit, we'll be able to see those lights. Okay, now these two uh, uh, rim lights in the back these are going to be the ones that have the, the most effect on the subsurface scattering if we view the bear from the front, okay? Um, we'll talk more about that later on. The uh, right uh, key light here, this key light on the right, not going to have much of an effect. We can turn that on or off. You can see just like that. Um, you can see the subsurface scattering a little bit better, actually, when we turn that off. Um, so it's not on, but it's still kind of glowing from the front. So that uh, that light, again, is entering from the back and uh, scattering and sort of creating that glowing effect on our gummy bear. Uh, so that's generally subsurface scattering. We'll kind of demonstrate a couple more examples as we move along here. Okay, but let's go ahead and just uh, make that one invisible. Now, very important uh, as well, uh, with, with the uh, lights that you want to have subsurface scattering on, applied to, you need to make sure that uh, you go over here and select subsurface transmission, okay, with the light selected. So if I don't have that selected on this, on this uh, right uh, left rim light here, you can see the effect, a much different effect. If we take this one as well and we totally delete that subsurface scattering, now what's going to happen is you can see it's just basically there's no uh, semi-transparency, there's no refraction of light um, going through our teddy bear. Okay, so that's very important uh, to have those enabled, uh, subsurface scattering and subsurface scattering. Also, the shadow has a very uh, significant effect as well. If we take off the shadow, you can see um, it's not going to be as... as uh, well lit through our through our uh, teddy bear there, our gummy bear, I guess you can say. Um, so if we take the shadow off this one as well, there you can see the effect almost uh, almost nil uh, of the effect. Okay, so you need to make sure that you have both shadow and uh, subsurface scattering transmission enabled on the lights that you want to demonstrate that effect. And there's also, of course, if you go to your uh, visual tab under shadows here, you have your uh, your uh, global shadows. So if we take that off. Again, it's going to um, reduce that effect or basically cancel that effect altogether. Okay, so make sure that you have all of those uh, shadows and subsurface transmission um, checkboxes enabled, uh, and then you'll get the results that you want. Okay, and we'll go to, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, hide these lights for now since we don't need those. In addition, you want to make sure that your uh, view mode and your viewport is set to high. Okay, if you have it on like quick mode, it's not going to show the, the shaders. Okay, that should be uh, familiar knowledge for most people. Um, but, uh, okay, so here we have our teddy bear. Let's take a look at the materials. I'm going to call them a gummy bear and a teddy bear interchangeably throughout this tutorial here. Um, so over in our materials here, uh, you can see uh, under texture settings, we have the shader type set to subsurface scattering. 
No, like all uh, shaders, like all materials, we have the option to change that from uh, subsurface scattering to uh, traditional or PBR. Let's change it to PBR, PBR and see what it looks like now. Obviously not as impressive. When you have PBR on, you can go to your opacity map and you can change your transparency, um, you know, um, just like this um, very easily. But I'm going to switch back to uh, triple S mode here and we'll call it triple S mode. And when you try and change the strength of the opacity map in triple S mode, it's going to just disappear at a value of one. OK, so subsurface scattering doesn't uh, support the tra uh, semi transparency of the opacity map. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Let's go down to the uh, subsurface scattering uh, shader settings down here. OK, so we have uh, shader settings specifically for subsurface scattering. And then our textures, we have this transmission map. We'll take a look at that first. Now, if you uh, go into your adjust color panel for your transmission uh, parameter here, you can adjust the brightness. And you can see uh, if we increase or decrease that amount of brightness, you'll get a real, much stronger or a much uh, weaker effect uh, for subsurface scattering. So you can almost make it like it's glowing. Um, all right, so that's a very important map to be aware of. Uh, the more you adjust this map, uh, you can get some drastically different effects, okay? Just double click on brightness to return it back to the default value there and close that down. Now we also have the subsurface scattering map here or the SSS map. There are different ways in which you can limit this effect to certain areas of the mesh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, but for now, it's evenly applied to the entire mesh. Of course, different areas and different uh, extremities in different ways. Um, and then we also have the micronormal map here as well. So the micronormal map, um, uh, there's a micronormal mask. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, micronormal right here, uh, this map. Basically, if we go down here, um, let's go past our blend map here to micronormal. You can see, let's zoom in on our uh, our uh, little teddy bear or gummy bear's uh, hand here. You can see the, um, in that specular highlight there, you can see the uh, micronormal uh, having its effect. If we decrease that tiling like this, we're going to get something like bigger and thicker like this, more rough. Um, all right, and you can also increase the strength as well, uh, just like this. Decrease the strength so it'll be smoother um, and so on and so forth. Just like that. And if you want, of course, smoother edges to your uh, your gummy bear, for example, you can also ch uh, change your bear um, over here. Let's just uh, go a little bit further over here. You can change this from uh, original to uh, subdivision mode and just get a, bit, a little bit of a smoother effect on, on the uh, character as well. Um, so I'm just going to leave these values at, uh, I think they were at the default here. Now, if we adjust the blend map, let's just zoom out a little bit here so we can get a better look at our uh, sweet looking bear here. Um, if we had try to adjust the blend map uh, brightness or uh, saturation, there's really not going to be any effect. And the reason for that is because we don't have a base uh, map in our uh, base color map here in our textures. First, we need to copy one first. Let's just take our uh, subsurface scattering or microdermal mask, whatever, and uh, copy that just by going here and copying. And then we'll go up to our base color and uh, go ahead and give that a paste. There we go. Now we have something to uh, to blend with. So let's go down to our uh, blend map again here. And if we adjust the brightness, now you can see it's, uh, you know, reducing or increasing that effect there. Um, you can just manually enter in values like this. Saturation, uh, not going to have as much of an effect, but again, a very slight effect you can see here. Um, so increased saturation is going to kind of basically just uh, brighten everything up a little bit. If we enter a value of like one, for example, it's going to be real bright. So let's just take that back down to uh, the default values there and we'll get rid of our uh, our base color map for now since we don't really want to have that affecting everything else. Okay, that's just how you can, uh, you know, adjust the uh, the blend map and, uh, and increase or decrease that effect there. Now also in the blend map I forget to mention here is ambient occlusion map occlude all lighting. We have that selected right now, but we currently don't have an ambient occlu occlusion map in our uh, texture settings here. Okay, so let's go ahead and just add one of those. And I have an explore folder uh, at the ready here. You can see we have a bear underscore AO, and this is our ambient occlusion map. We'll just go ahead and click and drag it into our ambient occlusion channel there. And now you can see our bear has these cool uh, eyes and a nose, right? Uh, more defined uh, facial features. So if we uh, take that ambient occlusion map, we can increase or uh, decrease the, uh, the strength there. And uh, you get the effect just like that. We'll just go ahead and uh, I think it was, gosh, at like 20 something. Uh, something looks good, 20, 35 will be fine. Okay, and if we take that out, again, it's just going to basically remove the ambient occlusion effect on our bear. So I kind of, I kind of like this. It makes it look a bit more, uh, has a bit more depth to our, uh, to our bear there. All right, so let's go ahead and close down our blend map there and jump back into micro normal here. 
Now we also have a micro normal mask uh, uh, texture channel here that I mentioned earlier. You can see currently this is just white. There's really nothing special about it. But again, I do have a uh, uh, file here. I'm going to click and drag this micro normal mask that has a little black dot on it. And that little black dot is actually on the place of our character's uh, left, left paw, I guess you can call it there, okay? So if I notice the difference now between the, uh, the right paw and the left paw, the left paw is completely uh, absent of any micro normal activity. Okay, we can go ahead and uh, just go uh, press control Z um, to take that back to uh, our regular map there. So again, if I just apply that uh, left, if I apply that texture one more time, the micro normal mask to the uh, texture channel there, boom, just uh, gets all smooth because the left paw is the only part that's not being affected um, according to the mask by the uh, micro normal map. Okay, let's just control Z that once and take it off this time. There we go. Okay, after micro normal, we'll take a look at uh, roughness, specular roughness. Okay, so a value that uh, a lot of you are probably very familiar with. Uh, let's zoom out on the entire bear here so you can see him a bit better. Um, so specular, the results, okay, so you can decrease the specular highlights. Again, those are just, uh, you can see the little white spots. Those are called specular highlights on the gummy bear in various parts where the lights are reflecting off of. If we decrease that specular, um, you know, the results are going to be a lot rougher. Increase the specular, it'll seem smoother and uh, more slick, okay? Um, there's also the uh, micro roughness scale as well. So if we increase that, um, so this kind of has a more detailed effect than the overall specular uh, highlights there. So if we increase our, uh, let's take a look, for example, at this paw. Um, if we decrease the micro roughness, again, it can be, it'll be very, very slick. Uh, increasing micro roughness, again, we can add uh, that sort of more textured and, and dry look to our uh, to our jade or whatever uh, emerald this, uh, this bear is. Okay, now under specular roughness, there's also more advanced settings here as well. I'll go through these really quickly. So we have the option to apply, um, if we go up to here to our uh, um, shader settings, we also have the RGBA area mask, okay? So currently it's black, so basically there's no special section here that uh, is affected in different ways. Um, so if we increase, if we you know modify channel A or channel R, uh, channel G, channel B, nothing is gonna change, okay? We can just double click them all to uh, return them back to default values. Um, however, I have this uh, map here. Let's go back to uh, Photoshop, there we are. Okay, so this is our RGBA map. This, uh, of course, um, corresponding to red, green, blue, and alpha. Okay, these are the uh, different channels here. Um, so basically, if you input this map into that texture channel, you're going to be able to dictate uh, which areas uh, have a higher specular value and which areas don't, uh, which areas have a lower specular value. Okay, so we have the nose and the chest area kind of, and the ears uh, defined separately according to the different uh, values there. So let's go ahead and close down Photoshop. And this is the mask right here. You can't see it's just a target thumbnail. But I'll just go ahead and click and drag that into the RGBA area uh, mask there. And uh, that'll just uh, pop in there. And uh, if we mouse over it, you can see a good look at it right there. Okay. So now we can actually define the roughness or the specular highlights and uh, the roughness scale values in different areas um, at different uh, on our, on our uh, gummy bear here. So the R... The R corresponds to the uh, the nose. Let's take a look at the nose here. This little nose area here, cute little button nose. Okay, so if we decrease or increase the nose, you can see that little specular highlight there in the nose, right? Disappearing and reappearing. However, nothing else is being affected. Okay, only that nose little area there. Um, if we do the uh, green value, which is the, the gummy bear's sort of chest, uh, it's going to be this area here in the middle. Okay. And the B is the, I believe, was the ears. Yep. The uh, cute little ears on the top here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. You can, uh, you know, change the roughness for each of those values individually. And of course, our alpha channel is entirely white, so that's going to change the uh, values for the entire uh, entire bear here. So increase or decrease. Um, you can see the results right there, and that's the same as unmask roughness scale. Okay, so if if there was no mask, it would just be un unmask roughness scale right there. Um, there's also edge roughness multiplier, okay, so you can kind of increase that specular value around the edges, uh, just like this. Uh, pay attention to the edges of the of the gummy bear, like, uh, let's get a bit of a better view here. Something like that, you can kind of see on the head there, okay, we can decrease that, increase that, just along the edges, right? And that's really, uh, you know, just a value for um, 
edges where the light uh, is, is affecting it. You can make it very shiny along the edges or, uh, or very uh, rough. Uh, it really is up to you. And the last one is the roughness lerp. Okay, lerp just basically, uh, let's increase our, uh, our uh, value here, decrease it rather. Um, uh, roughness lerp will kind of just sort of uh, dissipate the, uh, the specular highlight, um, sort of a cloudy look or a more focused look. Okay, so you can see if we decrease that roughness lerp, um, it's really uh, uh, focused, really kind of grainy, uh, or really um, detailed. If we increase that roughness lerp, you can see it becomes a bit more uh, dissipated, okay? Just a very slight uh, effect on the, uh, the paw of our, uh, of our bear there. Here's another image comparison that may give you a bit more of a visual description of what roughness lerp does, since sometimes it's a bit harder to notice. This first image has a roughness lerp of zero, and you'll notice that a lot of the specular highlights have an almost glowing appearance and they uh, blend into each other a bit more, despite more of a wrinkled surface. Uh, on the second image, we have a roughness lerp of one. In this image, you can see that the specular highlights are tighter and less of a glow. This can kind of be used to enhance the appearance of dryness on a surface, which is kind of the opposite of a fuzzy glow that can often simulate a sort of hazy dew of, uh, appearance on the surface. All right, so the last section we're going to take a look at here is the subsurface scattering section right under specular roughness. Let's throw that open there. You can see the first two parameters that pop up are trip less fall off and trip less radius. Fall off is just basically the uh, color that indicates where the effect is strongest. So I'm going to change this to a bright red so just so we can see it. You can see that uh, red area there is where the subsurface scattering effect is, is the strongest. And uh, obviously because the, our main lights are behind the bear at this point, if we rotate over to this side here, the effect is not going to be, uh, it's going to be very minimal. Okay, so um, subsurface scattering is obviously strongest when the uh, main lights are in the, uh, behind the object that we're looking at. Let's go ahead and uh, change this back, control Z, change it back to our nice bright emerald color there. And below that we have uh, subsurface scattering radius. Okay, so this kind of um, uh, basically uh, dictates the amount of dissipation or the blur effect of the subsurface scattering. So if we take this down to a lower value, you'll see it becomes very sharp, uh, very detailed. Um, you may want this in certain cases. It looks almost like a scratched up stone underneath underneath the surface. Very stone-like. If we increase that radius, it'll blur a lot more. Okay, it'll become a lot, lot softer and more polished uh, look. So just be aware that the uh, the uh, effect that the subsurface scattering radius has on the uh, appearance of your of your model. Okay, we'll just go ahead and uh, change that back to the 13 there. Now another thing I want to take a look at here is if we change this, you know, take a take it to a lower value like this, for example, uh, and we go up here to our subsurface scattering map. Right now it's white, so it's having a, a uniform effect over the entire surface of the uh, bear there. If we change this to uh, we bring in this subsurface scattering map here, which Basically, if you can tell, is masking out the uh, the body of the of the bear there. Okay, so the midsection, the body here, uh, this area here. So pay attention to this area specifically there. Uh, you can see it's become very uh, very focused uh, right now, and the rest is kind of blurred. And if we increase this value here, you can see that it has has less of an effect on that area now. Okay, so just be aware of that when you bring that uh, that map in. What's going to happen is it's going to kind of mask out the certain area that uh, is black on your subsurface scattering map. All right, let's go ahead and control Z and undo that a couple times just to get rid of our map there. Okay, now we're back to uh, everything is uniform again. Everything will blur at the same rate. Okay, and just like uh, with subsurface, uh, with specular roughness rather, we have an advanced section down here as well, which uh, has effects according to the uh, RGB uh, alpha map there. Okay, so the green will be the body. The red will be like the uh, the nose and the blue will be the ears. You can see here if we uh, change the uh, um, subsurface scattering for the for the nose, for example, it's going to be slightly more detailed on the nose. Again, this has a very uh, um, light effect. You can see on that nose it gets sharper and uh, a lot blurrier just like that. So again, you're going to see a very, very slight effect uh, right there on the, on the ears, the sharpness of the, of the chip less effect right there, just like that. Okay. And alpha, of course, is the entire thing. Let's take a look at uh, the next value here, which is trip less distribution. This is kind of dictates the distribution of, of the subsurface scattering around your bear. You can take it all the way down, um, all the way to the top, and you see the effect here. Generally, you want this to be um, a very high value, unless you want to kind of be more picky and specific about where the uh, um, effect is taking place. Okay, and then the index of uh, trip less IOR, index of refraction there. 
increase that. Basically, just adjust the kind of the angle of the uh, refraction within the within the teddy bear. Kind of a detailed, uh, specific lighting effect. But uh, yeah, just if you want to change the angle, essentially of of the uh, chip less effect, and you can also just double click it and take it back to uh, the default value there. Tripless surface decay has a strong effect on the appearance of your surface as it has to do with the level of simulated thinness or thickness on your object. Uh, you'll see that we probably want to tweak that effect here further in terms of light angle since the curves of the bear make it seem as though uh, different parts uh, such as the left paw appear disproportionately thick uh, despite being thinner than the body in general. Uh, light position and object curvature are something to watch out for if you decide to modify the triples surface decay parameter too much. Okay, so let's take a look now at how to convert from uh, one shader to another. On the screen right now, we have all this scrumptious looking fruit. It looks very delicious, but it's going to look a lot more delicious once we apply the correct shader to it. Um, currently, we are using PBR shaders for all the fruit. So if we click on uh, any of the fruit items here, you can see the pear, for example, is a PBR shader. This uh, suspiciously looking rotten banana here is also PBR. And our grapes look more like olives in this case, um, so they're, they're PBR as well. And we're going to convert these uh, grapes from looking like olives to looking a bit more gr like grapes. Okay, so the uh, the grape surface is a lot more translucent than a, your general olive. Uh, okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to select our uh, single, select our lucky first grape here. Uh, you can see right now it says shader type PBR. And what we can do is just simply select shader type right here and change from PBR to SSS. Okay, so once we change to SSS, you'll see it becomes a lot more grape-like in this case. You can do that. You, you, can, you can do it one by one by you know selecting this grape over here and uh, doing that as well. But of course, that's going to take a long time. Luckily, we have this entire grape object here. You can see now there's a uh, two. Uh, most of them are PBR except for this one here that we changed, and probably another one somewhere else down here. I uh, can't, can't find it right now. But uh, if we wanted to, you know, instead of doing it one by one, we can do it for all all materials in the entire object. All we need to do is go here and select Convert Object Shader and then select Shader Type to SSS, okay? And go ahead and convert. All right, and that's perfect. So now all the grapes have been uh, set to uh, to PBR, or set to uh, subsurface scattering there. And we also have a great preset as well. If we go to our uh, scene manager, or rather our content manager, back to our media tab, uh, we have a specific setting for grape uh, somewhere here, green grapes. Okay, we can just click, click and drag that onto our... Uh, material there. Now very important to note here, since this grape doesn't have a stem on it or anything, it's just a basically a circle. Um, if you have a UV map that you need to pay attention to, do not select material settings and textures. Okay, when you apply the material. Just apply the shader and the shader parameters. Do not apply the material settings and textures, otherwise that's going to mess up your UV map. Okay, in this case we don't need to worry about that, so let's go ahead and select apply. And now you can see here that the material name is set to triple S green grape here. And this material name is uh, still at uh, Fong ESSG or whatever that is, okay? And then, of course, what you can do is you can just uh, copy this uh, material here if you want and paste it to uh, all the other grapes, uh, like over here, for example, uh, just like this. And you get that uh, special grape preset. Okay, so even though it's set to PBR, it's not, you know, perfect yet. Uh, you can, but you can apply that to uh, all the grapes that you want in your scene. And uh, since there's a lot of them, well, I won't really do all of them here, but uh, you can see the effect that it has. It makes them look a lot better and uh, a lot more like grapes and a lot less like uh, olives there. Okay, so really that's um, the easy way to convert. And we also have uh, the option if we want to convert, let's press escape here to get out of the paste mode here. Um, now, if we don't want to do that for like, you know, set all the subsurface scattering for every single object separately in our scene, uh, another way we can change it all to uh, subsurface scattering shader is by going up to the modify panel here and convert all shaders to and then just select uh, human and SSS and then convert. And it's going to make everything look a lot more scrumptious. And you can see there it looks a lot more beautiful and uh, there's some semi-translucency uh, semi applied on uh, the objects in the scene. looks a lot more uh, scrumptious and uh, specular highlights are a lot more appealing there. Um, let's go ahead and apply a couple more of these uh, presets here. So we have uh, a maple leaf one we can apply to this maple leaf, for example. Okay, in this case we want to retain the UV map, so we're not going to select material settings and textures replace. We're going to only apply the uh, shader textures and parameters. And you'll see it uh, change a little bit right there. Okay, so if we, uh, ooh, not too close there. Looking a lot, uh, a lot better. That uh, maple leaf there is looking a lot uh, more appealing. 
You get that nice uh, reflection of uh, specular water on the, on the leaf there as well. Uh, okay, let's apply the next one to the apple. We have a preset for apple as well. So uh, let's take a look at how these apples change. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, the apple one, it's organized semi-alphabetically. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, again, we want to keep the UV map uh, intact on this one. So I'll just apply that. Okay, and you'll see it'll look a little bit different than the other ones. And in this case, we're just going to uh, copy and paste the uh, material just like this. Bop and bop. You'll see it'll change uh, the uh, parameters just slightly, um, but just overall looks makes it look a bit more uh, appealing and, and realistic uh, than before. Here's a look at the same fruit ball after I've tweaked and refined the various uh, subsurface scattering parameters. You can see that I softened the specular values and adjusted the lighting slightly so that they have less of a shiny, waxy look. And I also got rid of a lot of the rottenness on the bananas since they were bothering me. All right, so that's really all I wanted to show you guys in this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Um, hopefully you learned a lot about the new subsurface scattering shader and uh, how to uh, apply it to uh, different items in your scene and the different parameters. Uh, most of it is just kind of fooling around on your own time, so I encourage you to do that to get the results that you want. And uh, make sure you check out our other uh, tutorials on our Learning Center and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, as always. And I hope to see you in the next video.